Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. And on the test bench on the side of my computer desk, we have the Xilinx C1100 FPGA. Um, it's got the stock cooler on it for right now. Uh, we're gonna upgrade it to the Osprey dual fan cooler in the future, but I just wanted to go through the setup process or what I got, what I did to get this guy running not only on Linux, but on Hive OS. So let me take you over to the machine and show you what we're doing right now with this stock cooler. So the reason I wanted to show the stock cooler um, is because I wanted to show the performance difference that we could get. You can see right now the core is very low at the recommended level inside Team Red Miner. And we're only getting about 1.6 giga hash on Caspa. Uh, we were getting around 73 mega hash on Ethereum, but after only four minutes, this thing overheated. Right now our temperature is around 60 degrees in Florida. Room is warming up because I have the AC and the big fan off uh, just for recording this part. So that's going to come up probably into 6065, even with this low core clock, VCC INT, VCC BRAM, VCC MEM. And you can see the power is only at 44 watts. So this is on Hive right now. And I want to go through the process of showing you how I even got this to work in the first place. Uh, so let's do that and switch over to the main system. So this is a fresh install of Hive OS, and I purposely changed a couple things so it would give us a hard time. Right now you can see there's an error. This error is because if we actually look at Hive, it doesn't detect the FPGA, and so it won't really apply the flight sheets that you might have set up for your other cards or your other rigs to this one. And it's saying no such directory because I had to set up Team Red Miner as custom. There's a reason why I did that. And let me switch over and show you why. On the Hive dashboard, you can't see the FPGA. The only thing we can see is the CPU. So unfortunately, even though we have fly sheets set up for all kinds of different uh, rigs, right? You can see Casper's in here, Ergo, Alpha, Raven, all that stuff. But if we go to the specific worker that the FPGA is on, because the only thing that's on there is the CPU, it's not detecting. So when I go to flight sheets, there's nothing in there. All the flight sheets that I'm used to are not in there. And even if I try to edit one or change it and choose the defaults, you know, instead of custom, I choose, you know, team red miner or what have you, that that is going to disappear. It's just going to disappear from this available list in front of us. So I had to choose custom, right? And here's my config. I had to choose custom, grab the URL from the main releases page. So right click the Linux, copy link, put that into the flight sheet and detected Team Red Miner, chose the hash algorithm, chose the, the worker, the address, all that stuff. And then I put this command in there, right? Because this is the command that we need to get started, but it can't detect it. It just can't. You saw that. If we go to miner, miner start, and try to launch it again, it's going to give us an error, an error out, which is the error that you saw at the very beginning. So we need to see if we can get it to see the damn thing. Uh, so using hacker hackster.io, there's a couple commands in here we can use. Uh, most importantly is the command to make sure we can even see the device. Uh, and that is right here. Pseudo team red miner list devices so if we run that here right click or excuse me paste enter the command is not found so i need to find where team red miner was put right i need to change directory and find where team red miner was put usually it will put it in a specific folder but we can actually see that if we go back to the other screen so we can actually get some information off of this error right we actually see some stuff. So it's in Hive, Miners, Custom, Team Red Miner dash V0.10.9. But I wonder if it's missing the dot Linux at the very end of this particular, that's why it's saying no such directory found. But that's the directory we need to get in there to run the script off of the FPGA guide to get it to detect and and run. So let's try doing that. 
So I copied it over from the error screen, the actual folder or directory that they say is missing. I type in CD for change directory and then I paste it in there, but still no, no joy. However, what, let's see what happens. And I'm just curious. I don't even know if this is going to work. If we add dash Linux at the end, boom, there it is. So it is there. It's just missing the dash Linux. So now if we go to the uh, hackster guide, I want to run the command, or excuse me, the FPGA guide. I want to make sure that the miner can detect this FPGA. So I just copied sudo team red miner list devices. I'm going to paste it in here, enter, and sure enough, it can. It can see the FPGA C1100 U55N PCID. This this is this is important right here. So this is the ID. Right. Remember, I, uh, if you wanted to flash your device back to a golden state uh, because you're going to be doing some bitstream management or whatever and you're, you're done mining for a little bit, you need that bus ID. That's very important to you. So make sure you hang on to this information right here. DNA, serial, all that. Hang on to that information. Copy that and paste it in a document or something. Just keep it safe so you have it. But it was looking for the wrong directory for this custom miner. Now... What we can do is we can go back to the FPGA guide and we can run the command or a command that has EF on it. So you can see I already have something here. Um, I don't like the clocks there, so I'm going to combine the two. I'm going to take this particular command, sudo team red minor, you know, dash A, EF hash, the wallet address, the pool URL. I'm going to paste that in there, but then I'm going to add the clocks that I want because, again, I'm on a stock cooler. Got to be very careful. So let's go back and grab my clocks that I want for right here. And paste as well. Let's make sure that I do not have too many extra spaces or anything like that. By using the arrows, you can't click. So a backspace, I just deleted the last nine, nine space. All right, now let's see if this works. If I hit enter, there it goes. Now it's loading the ETH bitstream. And if I wanted to, after I let this run for a little bit, I could then go back into Hive and I could change it from custom to just Team Red Miner. Now that it now that it's detected and everything, I can change it back and you know put it back to team red miner and set up config and stuff like that where i would still have to you know obviously fill out the basic information wallet uh worker uh worker name yada 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 or i could just put in all that extra config arguments down here which is exactly what i'm going to do so dash o for the pool address and everything um the wallet dot worker needs to be something like this for my particular situation only because it's very important um, that I have this in there. So worker name, and then I got to add the pound sign that to get my little benefits pool address. We can copy this up to here. And then I need to make sure I put my clocks in there. Password X. And then extra config. And this is just for Ethereum right now. I haven't even showed Caspa. But I just wanted to show you the inconvenient part about Hive not being able to detect it. Now, if you had an AMD GPU on here, which is what Team Red Miner is designed for, AMDs, um, it might make it a little bit easier because you could just run Team Red Miner, run that script, and then make sure you put in your FPJ clock core, uh, INT, BRAM, MEM, and it will it should automatically detect. I haven't tested that theory out, but it should automatically detect. So let's go back to the miner and here we are. Um, it's eventually going to so bitstream just loaded successfully right here. It just highlighted. So it just got done loading the bitstream. You can see the core is at 50 right now. Uh mem is at 1200. That's gonna overheat probably. Uh the mem is pretty doggone high. Is that what I set it at? No, it, it didn't take my clocks. Interesting. My clocks did not apply. So even if I do get a hash rate, this thing is going to climb in temp really quick. Right now we're at 32 degrees Celsius. See? We're getting a thread error. 
So I found the bit stream. It's loading it up, but I think the clocks are messed up. And that's something I need to fix. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apply changes. And either this flight sheet's going to disappear or it's going to stay. So let's find out. Update all workers. It stayed because it's applied. The flight sheet stayed because it's applied. If I unset it, it's going to disappear from here. And then I got to do it all over again. But then if you go to your regular flight sheets, the problem is, is you're going to have a bunch of duplications, which I, I've, I've done many of times. You can see if I scroll down here, CASPA, CASPA. Um, now that I just, I, there's an old EF right here for that particular miner. So I'm going to delete that. So you got to do a little bit of cleanup. So once you change the, the, the algo that you're mining in Hive for the FPGA, you're going to lose the flight sheet, the original flight sheet that you had. So right now, let's see if it gets its act together and hashes away and I'll bring you back. Bitstream did load successfully. I had to restart because I, I was running the miner in a custom uh, through the actual directory of Team Red Miner itself in custom as well as after I changed the flight sheet from custom to Team Red Miner. So I was trying to run dual instances, caused the JTAG issue. So sh cold shutting down, shutting down, not rebooting, shutting down the system, letting it wait and restarting it. Uh, brought it back to life and now you can see that we're submitting shares now I got to shut this thing down real quick because on ETH even with uh, Adjustable clocks stock coolers things gonna get hot So I'm gonna go ahead and just shut this down and switch over to Caspa, which is really easy Now that we have the flight sheet configured. We don't want to lose it We just want to edit it and change it to our liking because once we unset it We're gonna remember we're gonna lose this guy completely so instead of just creating a new one, right, we're going to just change the one that's here. Because as soon as you unset it, it's going to disappear from your list in Hive. So just come here, Caspa, choose the wallet, configure. You can do choose your pool if you want to. Team Red Miner, let's make sure there's no config arguments that's getting in the way. Then I'm going to upload my manual clocks because, again, I don't want to push this thing too far. So that's my manual clocks for Caspa. Uh, I could use a little bit of tooling. Um, apply, and then we're going to change the flight sheet to, to match. So Caspa um, Hero. C1100. Just, just so you know what it is. It just depends on what you want. But let's just get this thing off of ETH because my clocks are not good for it. And we're going to go ahead and hit update all workers. And I'll show you what errors or what it does if it does have any errors. So it's already trying to load the bitstream. It detected Caspa. Team Red Miner is smart. It already detected and is loading the bitstream. It's going to take a minute for the bitstream to be fully loaded. There you are. Bitstream fully loaded and we got a share submitted already. All right, and there you go. So now it's mining Caspa. Again, it could mine ETH. My clocks were inefficient or ineffective for it. That's my fault, not the FPJ's fault. 1.59 is about the max for this card. Right now with the stock cooler and the clocks that I have, our temperatures are hitting about the, the limit uh, that it was, 56, 57. I could push the core a little bit higher to get some extra giga hash, but I'm not going to risk it for the biscuit. Um, it's a bit of a trial and tribulation with this. My best recommendation, since this video is so long, is use the uh, GitHub FPGA guide from Team Red Miner and some of the things that I mentioned to you, and you should be fine. Otherwise, the Discord for the FPGA or uh, various Discords, including mine, will have some additional information as well. But you just got to make sure that the, the, the system detects the card, um, you know, you can set it up as custom in the flight sheet, uh, change that directory to wherever the install is. You might have to add some extra characters like Dash Linux, and then make sure you get the device detected. Once you are detected, try running the commands that are on here. So here's your one for your Ethereum, but you got to change the pool address because Ethermine is no longer mineable to uh, on ETH. Um, and then for Caspa, it's actually inside the team red miner folder um but you know otherwise you could just run the same pseudo team red miner instead of dash a e hash it would be cas k-a-s dash o for the pool url dash u for your wallet dot worker name 
dash P for password and X. If you just change that all around and then run that, um, you'll be able, it will automatically load the Bitstream and be up and running. But just hit us up in the Discord. Let us know if you have any further questions. And I'm sorry for the super long video, but I haven't seen a full comprehensive like breakdown on the process. And uh, you don't want to offend or make any of the FPGA team uh, upset, especially those who are, are in the private Bitstream field. Uh, so not everything gets told and not everything I can bring you to the public. But this is a basic setup. Team Red Miner makes it easy for the average end user to get involved if they really want to. It is a little bit more work than just slapping a GPU on a riser and calling it a day, but you can get it done. So just do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out some of the links in the description. that will support the channel and what we do here. And again, thank you for your time. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Um, and I re really appreciate you. Hit the like button for me on the way out, all right? Take care. See you. Thank you.